My 85-year-old grandfather, Gino Lazzarato, was a hard-working man all his life. He got that amazing worth ethic from his parents. My parents were both Italian, both born in Italy. Uh, my father uh, walked from his house. We, my folks come from way northern Italy and wa then walking distance to Germany. Germany was the only country in Europe that had any money that had mines and stuff and work. So my father walked to Germany to get a job and got a job in the coal mines in Germany. My mother grew up on a farm that grew tobacco, as far as I know. My grandfather, like many of us, had no idea what he was going to do when he grew up. He was just trying to grow up as a kid and enjoy it as much as he could. I had no idea what I wanted <laughs> to be until I was in my 30s. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I started out being a, an auto glass mechanic, repaired windows and windshields and cars and uh, regulators, that's what they call things that roll windows up and down in the car doors. That was long before power windows, you know, the, everything was a crank then. And uh, then I became a, a, a roofer, and I started the, the construction business was booming in, in, the, in the United States. And I became a roofer, got to be pretty good at it. And, uh, and then I uh, went on the fire department. My grandpa had no idea he was going to become a firefighter until he heard about a test about a week before the test was about to be given. And I decided to take it, and uh, luckily I was able to pass the test with not much problem, you know. Yeah. No, I, I, I had no idea I was going to become a fireman. But I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Before my grandfather became a firefighter, there was quite a bit of training he had to do. Uh, you had to spend uh, roughly two months at the fire academy to learn how to do different things, you know, special knots, tying knots, uh, in case you needed to be hoisted down or get somebody out of a, you know, off the side of a building or something, and and uh, different, you know, you had to do different, write different tests and and understand how, and you know how to handle hoses and and how to raise ladders and stuff like that, you know. Gino was never close with his brothers until work brought them together. My brother Mario, he's passed now. Uh, him and I had never really got close until we both ended up on the Chicago Fire Department. We had something in, something in common to talk about, you know. My grandfather was a hard-working man and worked two jobs all of his life. Well, I continued roofing even after I was on the jobs. Where I roofed for over 30 years roofing and 33 years on the fire department. So I practically my whole life I worked two jobs. My grandfather had many firefighting stories, which is why I'm glad that he shared with me his favorite one. I, I don't want to see him boast him, but I remember running into a fire near the, near the firehouse that I was at over there in 75th on 73rd Street, and um, we pulled up to the fire, and a man and woman come running out, and he says, I have two children in there, and we don't know, you know, they're, they're liable to be dead in there. We don't, we lost them. We couldn't get them out. Uh, we had just gotten air masks then before. When I first came on the job, there was no such thing as an air mask. So I had the tank on my back and the air mask on my face, and I told, I asked them, I said, where's the last time you saw him? And it was in their bedroom. So they told me approximately where it was. I found it. Couldn't see my hand in front of my face. But I could, it was very quiet. There was nobody in the building yet. No firefighters in it. No, nobody putting fires out yet. And I can hear breathing. And I crawled on the floor and I found, it was a little boy and a little girl. The boy was a little baby. And the girl was a little bit older, a year or two older. And luckily, I went, I could see a window only maybe 15 feet away. And I went over to the window, and luckily, I was able to raise it. And just right around then, it was just a sh sheer luck. Somebody had thrown the ladder up to that window. And a, a friend of mine was coming up that window, and I yelled to him. I said, hurry on up here. I got two kids. I didn't want to carry them down because I was up on the second floor. 
and I want to carry him down through all that smoke. And I handed them both. I handed one to him, and he went down, and another guy came up right away, and I handed the other one. And uh, they both survived. And um, later on, they wanted to know who saved the children, you know, and they were talking to the kid who brought him down on the ladder, you know. And uh, he said, no, it wasn't me. It was Laz that handed us the kids. We just brought them down, you know. So naturally, I got interviewed and all that other junk, you know, and I was on television for a day or so. But other than that, you know, I mean, I've saved a couple of uh, people. I remember dragging people, grown-ups, grown dragging them into the elevator and getting them down out of the smoke, you know. But uh, it's, it's just a good feeling that you're doing something and you're saving somebody's life, you know. Not saying that I know a couple of them that didn't make it, but... Oh well, I tried. Yeah, I know what you mean. But uh, other than that, the stories from firefighters are usually pretty, pretty much fun. You know, what I mean, they're just uh, I. There's a lot of sad things that happen, but we don't think about that. <laughs>